Hey, Soul Con Nation, Eric Stewart here with the weekly teaching team. It's my honor to get to be back with you today and jump in God's Word together. So as always, grab your copy of God's Word, pen and a piece of paper, and of course, your cup of black coffee. Let's pray and jump in. Father, we just ask today that you would just open our hearts to you, speak into our lives, take your Word, and Lord, may you implant it in our hearts. And Lord, may we take it, Lord, just meditate on it, and more importantly, may we obey it. Change us in Jesus' name. Amen. So guys, I just want to jump right in to James chapter number one today. We're going to jump in just a minute, but I just wanted to share something with you that I thought was really interesting. Most of you know, if you've been around uh, any time, uh, you've heard of Nike, the shoe company. And I know uh, where you stand with them, that doesn't matter. But I want to share something with you. Back in 1988, Nike, uh, they came out with a new slogan. Most of you probably know it already. It's just do it. They wanted something that would speak to everyone at any age doing any activity. After they launched their campaign, in just 10 years, their share in the North American sports shoe market went from 18% to 43%. They went from $877 million worth of sales to $9.2 billion in sales worldwide. But listen to this interesting part where their slogan came from. Their slogan came from a man named Gary Gilmore. Gary Gilmore had murdered two people in Utah in 1976. On January the 17th, 1977, Mr. Gilmore sat in front of a firing squad, and when they asked if he had any last words, his words were, let's do it. Knight took words from a man that was about to die, and they changed things. We have the word from a man named Jesus that died and came back to life, and it's a message for everyone, and if we take it and use it, we can change things for us, but we can change things for our world, for our community, for our families, if we just do it. James, we're going to pick up in verse 19. James here is talking to believers, and he's been telling us about trials, uh, how to profit from them, how to love God, and now we're going to see he's going to talk to us about some qualities that us as believers need that's going to help us grow and help us walk out our faith. So James chapter number 1, verse 19, we're going to read through these, and I'm going to give you these five points, give you some scripture, and, and then we'll be done. So read with me. James 1, 19. My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, Humbly receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves, because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like someone who is looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away immediately, forgets what kind of person he was. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of works, this person will be blessed in what he does. Verse 26. If anyone thinks he is religious without controlling his tongue, his religion is useless and he deceives himself. Pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So let's jump right in. First thing I see we see in verse number 21 is, guys, men, we must get rid of all the filth in our life. Hey, that's the, that's the big sin. That's the little sin. We like to categorize sin, but can I tell you, in God's eyes, sin is sin. There is no big sin, no little sin. Sir, can I tell you, that, that little sin that you're hiding, what I call you know, your pet sin that you like to bring out every now and then and play around with and then put it back up because nobody knows about it. Sir, we must, if we're going to be the believers, the warriors that Christ is calling us to be, we must get rid of the filth. Why? Because it hinders us from moving forward. Uh, we hear this word from Commander Clark all the time, advance, advance. Listen, if we've got sin in our life, we cannot advance uh, the way God wants us to advance in our personal life, and we can't advance against the kingdom of darkness. Why? Well, one of the reasons is that we're participating a little bit with the enemy. Listen, but we can. You can get rid of that filth. It's as simple as this. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. An illustration that I have in my life, and it was a personal conviction, I used to dip snuff. Man, I dipped snuff for... Uh, 18 years. I started dipping snuff when I was 14 
years old. Uh, went through, man, I was dipping a can of Copenhagen a day. I was addicted. I would say I wasn't, but I was. Then in 2010, man, I, we got back in church. Me and my wife, for a few years, we were serving as uh, youth directors in our church, and God was uh, placing on my heart that he was calling me to preach. But it's one of those things where I wasn't sure if it was him calling or, or if it was just Eric thinking something stupid, and I sure didn't want to jump out on that limb without God. One day I, I was driving home. I can take you to that very spot where this happened. I was driving home down the road that day. I've been fasting. First time I'd ever fasted. I was fasting from food. Just didn't know what I was doing. I just said, I'm not, I told my wife, I'm not going to eat until I get a word from God to see if he has called me or not. That afternoon, I'm driving home from work, headed home, and I've got my can of Copenhagen, and I'm packing it, and God spoke to my spirit. And he said, that's what's keeping you from getting an answer from me. That moment, I took that can of Copenhagen, and I threw it out the window, and I told God if that was a sin in my life, and that was keeping him from speaking to me in this area, I was giving it to him. Next night, guess what? He gave me my answer. And to him be glory, I've never put another pinch of snuff in my lap, in my in my lip. I, I haven't had that craving. God took it. Now I know some, hey, he's powerful enough to take it. Some, he makes us walk through it. But I want to tell you, I had to get rid of that filth, that sin in my life for God to be able to speak to me so he could advance me like he wanted to. So number one, man, what is it in your life? That's a question that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. What do you need to get rid of? What's the filth that no one else knows about? Number two, we see this. Listen, we must receive the word. Psalm 119, 11 says this. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word receive, the word receive that it's using here in Scripture is the Greek word, and I'm going to tear this up, dikimil, which means to take with the hand, to take hold of, to take up. I think of this, man, we're right in the middle of college football season. I'm a big college football fan. But you see those receivers go out there. What do those receivers have to have? They have to have good hands. Man, you see, you see some of the defensive players, when they get a ball thrown straight to them, they, they fumble it, and sometimes they'll drop an interception. Why? Because they don't have the, the hands that the receivers have. They, they are built another way. But listen, for us to receive the words, those receivers, they've got to train. They've got to get in. They've got to daily, they're going out and physically training their bodies, uh, working on their eye-hand coordination, practicing simple things of catching a football, things we've done as children, throwing balls, just practicing the simple things. So when it comes to game day, when God's really wanting to speak into their life, they are ready to receive that football. Well, we should be just like they're ready to receive on Saturday when their quarterback throws it. Listen, when our supreme commander quarterback is throwing us something, we've got to be ready to receive it and not drop the pass. We must do it with meekness, mildness, humility. We must realize, listen, this is God's holy word and he wants to speak to us. So we must get rid of all the filth. We must be ready to receive the word when we're getting in. Listen, guys, when you go get your copy of God's word, listen to me. I think a lot of people don't hear from God because they go in reading it just like any other book and they're really not asking God to speak to them. They're, they're just opening it up. They're like, if we're going to read today, this looks like a good spot and read. Listen, be intentional. Get a Bible reading plan. You got the U version out. Uh, man, there's many different kind of things that you can pick up. Pick a book of the Bible and read a chapter a day. Uh, I use the HEAR process. H-E-A-R. Uh, read a chapter. Highlight a verse that sticks out to you. Then E, you explain what you just read in your own words. This is going to cause you to have to journal. Uh, then A, is you answer this question. How can I apply this to my life? And then R is respond. Well, I've looked at this. This verse stuck out to me. This is what it meant in my own words. This is how I can apply this to my life. Then R is how am I going to respond to what I just said I can apply to my life and do that. Get in God's Word. He wants to speak to you, but you got to be ready to receive and go expecting God to show up in your life. So first, get rid of the filth, receive the word. But thirdly, guys, we got to just do it. Did you hear what James said? He said, don't be just hearers of the word, but be doers. This world is going to tell you to do what feels good, to do what's right, to follow your heart. For God's sake, don't do that. Listen to what the Bible says about our hearts. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. 
Who can know it? Listen, that man or a woman, that, that, that woman at work that, that all the other men are looking at that makes you feel good when, when she talks to you or flirts with you or that inbox that you get on Facebook, that text message or that uh, pic you may be getting on Snapchat. Hey, the moment that that, that, that that woman and you are alone, listen to me, or you're in front of that screen, you got to flee from it. You got to run from it. You got to get rid of it. You just got to be able to do it. God's Word tells us this. Listen, 1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee sexual immorality. What's that mean? You got to just do it. Not hang around, play with it, think about it, say, I'm strong enough to get through it. Listen to me. If that's a temptation in your life, hey, take your iPhone, smash that sucker, go get you a flip phone. You say, that's funny. Hey, but it's worth it. What's the scripture say? He says, hey, if your eye offends, pluck it out. If your hand offends it, kind of like, is this better to go to heaven maimed than to go to hell fully intact? So get away from it. Flee from it. <coughs> Just do it. But for us to know the Word, we've got to get in the Word, we've got to receive the Word, but then we've got to do what the Word calls us to do. The problem with a lot of our men today is we've got a lot of hearers, but not a lot of doers. We've got a lot of guys that want to listen to a sermon and say, that's great. They want to go to church, mark it off the list, but they don't want to do what God has told them to do. It's time we just do it and become doers of the word. Don't be just a hearer. Listen, they say that in most of our churches that 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. You know why? It's because we've got a lot of hearers. It's because we've got a lot of people that's not doing their job. It's time that we take a look in the mirror. Listen, James said right here, listen, he said, look in that mirror. What a lot of us do, we look in the mirror. If I looked in my mirror in the morning and, and didn't wear a hat and I was going to fix my hair and I looked in, my, I looked in the mirror and my hair was all a mess and I just walked away and get busy doing something else, I can forget what my hair looked like. But if I stay, take the time when I'm in front of that mirror and watch the scripture talking about, this is a mirror that should mirror our life. We should take it and say, how is my life lining up to God's word? And if we see something there that's wrong, we should want to change it then. Not later, not wait till Sunday, but when we're in God's Word. Listen, Jesus said this, Luke 12, 48, For everyone whom much is given, much from him is required. Every time you sit under the teaching of God's Word, sir, that's something that you have been given. So much more will be required because you can't stand before Jesus one day and say, I didn't know. Because you've heard it. You've sat in a class and heard it. You've listened to sermons online. You've listened to these weekly teaching. But the reason I believe that we've got a lot of hearers, and this is my last point, is because we've got a lot of people that's got useless religion. They don't have a relationship with Jesus. They've just got useless religion just going through the motions. Listen, we have deceived ourselves by thinking that we're a good person. Your religion is useless without a relationship with Jesus. We see in here that it says true religion is this, that they reach out to their orphans and widows. It says that they visit them. You know what that word visit means? It means to make contact. It means for us to be intentional and go out there and reach them. You say, well, my church takes care of the widows and orphans. This is something God spoke into my heart a couple years ago. I don't think he's just talking about physical widows and orphans. There's a lot of spiritual widows and orphans inside your church, in your community, where, where their dad and mom's not taking them to church. Where, where their husband is, is not there for them. Listen, I'm not talking about you've got to be careful in those situations, but it might be you be intentional to make sure your wife goes and talks to that lady to make, to make sure that she's staying strong. You've got to protect yourself. But listen, we've got a lot of orphan young men inside our churches that need you, sir, to step up and be the man of God and to look out for that spiritual orphan and go raise him up and help raise him up to be the warrior. Who knows, you might pour into his life and he go win his mom and daddy to Christ Jesus one day. So, here's my final questions to you. What are you going to do about it? Maybe it's time you say, I'm tired of playing church and I'm ready to be the church. Right here, I think, pretty simple steps for you to step up and be the man of God that he's calling you to be. Number one, we've got to do some self-evaluation to get rid of all the filth that's in our life. Two, get in the Word. Not only get in it, receive it. Then just do the Word. Don't just be a hearer. And check yourself. Do you truly have a relationship with King Jesus? If not, I'd love to talk to you. Send me a personal message. Guys, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Tune in next week for our next weekly teaching. But until then, just do it.